What does the Bible prescribe as a solution to the problem of sin? What do I need to do in order to receive the forgiveness of sin? That is the point of today's discussion that's coming up. Hello everyone, my name is William Zulu Agbemin, the young man whom Jesus loves and a faithful witness for Christ. I welcome you to Grace Tidings Missions, the platform for evangelism, discipleship, and Bible studies. Our topic today is the forgiveness of sin. You can find additional detail on this topic on Grace Tidings website. The Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So regardless of who you are, regardless of your status, whether you are young or whether you are old, whether you are rich or whether you are poor, whether you are slave or free, whether you are Jew or Gentiles, regardless of your nationality, social or economic status, everybody has sinned. All have sinned. So it is also true, therefore, that everybody needs forgiveness of sin. Some people have come to terms with this truth that they are sinners. Others are here to admit the fact that they are sinners. They will often tell you, I'm not a sinner, I'm a good person. But then there are people who actually believe they are sinners and they want to do something about it, but they are applying the wrong solution. They are not doing the right thing that the Bible prescribed as a solution of sin. I'm going to begin by describing what is sin because I believe that it is the ignorance of what sin is that make, make it very difficult for a lot of people to admit or believe that they are sinners. You know, to some people out there, you really have to be very, very wicked or do wicked things before you can be considered a sinner. But that's not what the Bible says. So, so what then is sin according to the Bible? The Bible says all unrighteousness is sin. 1 John chapter 5, verse 17. All unrighteousness is sin. And 1 John chapter 3 verse 4 says, Whosoever committeth sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is a transgression of the law. So we have two, def two definitions that are saying the same things, saying similar things. So the first one says all unrighteousness is sin. And the second one says sin is a transgression of the law. So it means if you have ever told a very small lie. You've ever told any lie before, regardless of how small or harmless it seemed, you have committed a sin. And each and every time you disobey a clear instruction or a godly instruction, whether it's from a school teacher or whether it's from your parent or guardian or whether it's from a preacher, or anytime you read a clear commandment or a clear instruction in the Bible and you disobey it, you are committing a sin. Now, you only have to do this once to be a sinner. Only one time. Just tell one small lie, you are a sinner. And if there's anyone alive today who is good enough to have never done any of those things before, you've never done anything wrong before, you've never broken any rule or any law before, I got this for you. I have to remind you of Romans chapter 5 verse 12. The Bible says in that verse that by one man sin entered the world and death by sin. And so death passed upon all men for that all have sinned. So the point is this. If you think you're so perfect that you've never done anything wrong before, you are still a sinner because of the sin that you inherited from Adam. So you were born sinner on the day you were born. And that's because everybody inherited from the sin of Adam and Eve. And this is why forgiveness of sins becomes a necessity for all people, regardless of your social or economic status, regardless of who you are, whether you are young or old, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are free or slave, everybody needs forgiveness of sins. As a matter of fact, you can divide everybody in the world today into two groups. The, the group that is forgiven and those that are yet to be forgiven. Because everybody is a sinner, but some people have been forgiven their sins because they've gone to the right place, they're trusting in the right thing, others, their sins are still unforgiven. And my goal with this discussion is to show you from the Bible how to receive forgiveness of sins. Now, at this point, I'm going to briefly mention the necessity of repentance in connection to the forgiveness of sins. And you have to be very careful when it, when it comes to the topic of 
repentance because uh, there, there are a lot of pop, popular doctrines on, on this topic that are not biblical. For instance, a lot of people preach and believe that uh, repentance is that you stop committing sins. You don't commit sins anymore. That is not what repentance means according to the Bible. But repentance, when it comes to salvation, it means that you realize that you are going the wrong path and you turn around to follow the way of righteousness. And when it comes to uh, Christian life, you can talk about repentance in two ways. So there is the repentance that is required of the unsaved. So if you are not saved, there is a particular repentance that you need. And then there is the repentance that is necessary for Christian life. The repentance for salvation begins by the hearing of faith. That means you need to first hear the message of the gospel and believe before any change of heart can take place in you. Uh, Ephesians chapter 1 verse 13 says something about that. Let's look at the book of Mark chapter 4 verse 11. I'm going to read 11 and 12. It says, And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. It's very to his disciples now. It says, But unto them that are without, so those are the people that are still in the world, all these things are done in parables. So, so, so some people as are, are, are enabled, they're given the ability to understand the mystery, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. But others, they don't understand, it's given to them as parables. It says that sin they may see and not perceive, and hearing they may hear and not understand, lest at any time they should be converted and their sins should be forgiven them. So the point is this, you have to hear something, understand and believe it. You have to believe with your heart before forgiveness of sin can happen. And what you are believing is the message of the gospel. So the repentance that is needed for salvation is realizing that you are lost without Christ and that you need Christ in order for you to be restored and redeemed and you are turning to Christ for salvation. So it is the genuine salvation of uh, after it's been received by a person that produces the desire to flee sins and to live for God. So doing away with sins is not a requirement that you have to meet before you can be saved. But after you are saved, something happens to you. And some of the things that happen to you, a part of it will be you begin to hate the, the sins that you used to love. And the desire to do good things will begin to grow in you. But that doesn't happen until after you are saved. So the forgiveness of sins, like I said already, begins by you having the conviction of sin, which the gospel does to you. Part of the things that the gospel does to you is to show you that you are a sinner and that you are lost without Christ. Which, by the way, that was the first thing that I mentioned. So the message of the gospel will give the sinner the conviction of sin and the desire to want to do something about it. And the solution to the problem of sin is tied to the shedding of blood. So blood is required before sins can be forgiven. In Hebrews chapter 2 verse 1, the Bible says, Therefore we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them sleep. So it says the things that we've had, we need to pay a close attention to them because it's very easy for you to hear and know something and forget about it. But we are not supposed to forget about this one. It says, for if the word spoken by angels was steadfast and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation, which at first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. I know I read a lot in, in those verses, but the part that I want to focus on is in verse 2 that says, Every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. So what that means is that everything you do, every disobedience, every transgression of the Lord, every small sin, that you commit, there is always a penalty for it. There is a price to pay. If you break the law, there is a price to pay. 
You can pay a fine, you can go to jail, you can do community service. You have to do something to pay for the sins you commit. And when it comes to God, the sins that we commit against God, the penalty for it is death. And it's not just that you die and you stop living here on earth. You die and go to hell where you pay for your sin. You burn for all eternity in the unquenchable fire. That's how you pay for your sins. So which means in order for you to pay for your sin, somebody has to die. Whether you or somebody else has to die, shed his blood, give his life to pay for that sin. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22, it says, And almost all things are by law purged with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. So the blood has to be shed before sins can be forgiven. There is no exception to anyone. So you either die or somebody else will have to die in your place to pay the penalty of your sins. And this is what so many people do not understand that there is nothing that you can use to replace the requirement of blood shed for forgiveness of sins. And the truth about this which was received in the Old Testament because God told them that it is the blood that maketh an atonement for the soul. That, 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 that truth has not changed. It stayed the same way with God today, but it's just different because now we trust in a different kind of blood, not the blood of goat and calf, not the blood of animal or, or, or the sacrifices of animal. It is a different blood that was shed on our behalf. Someone has loved us enough 2,000 years ago to give his life for us. He died in our place. He shed his blood for our sins. His name is Jesus Christ. And this is the only sacrifice that is acceptable to God. That is the only sacrifice that God accepts for the remission of forgiveness of sins. So if you bypass Christ, you bypass the way of forgiveness. You bypass Jesus Christ, you bypass the cross, you bypass the way of salvation. The cross of Jesus Christ is the only way to forgiveness of sins. There is no other way. In Acts chapter 4 verse 12, the Bible says, Neither is there salvation in any other, for there is none other name under heaven given among men, whereby we must be saved. So, there is no way, there is no way you can do it outside of Jesus Christ. As I've pointed out earlier, there are a lot of people today in the world who are still not convinced that they are sinners. They refer to themselves as good people. They go about comparing themselves with others who may be morally worse than they are. That's the way they look at themselves. So, and, and for those who have, res who have admitted that they are sinners, they are applying the wrong solution. They, they are doing the wrong thing for forgiveness of sins. Now, many people have invented different kinds of solutions to the problem of their sins. They think they can do all kinds of things to receive forgiveness of sins, but it doesn't work. They are all fruitless. There is no good work uh, that will exempt you from the penalty of your sins if you bypass the cross of Jesus Christ. You have to go to the cross. Nothing else can help you. Nothing else can save you. Not even by praying without ceasing. You can pray all you want for forgiveness of sins. If you have not been trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not receive forgiveness of sins. Because that is not the way it works with God. You can fast and do videos for the rest of your life. Every day, do fasting and do videos for the rest of your life. Praying to God to forgive you without trusting in the blood of Jesus Christ. Your sins will not be forgiven. You can attend deliverance programs and be delivered every day for the rest of your life. If you are not trusting in the blood, you are not forgiven. You still remain an unforgiven sinner. And you can pay your tithe, pay, in fact, pay 100% for your tithe and pay all the fast food offering and all the kinds of offerings that have been invented by many churches. They pay all those offerings, give all your money to the church. That's not going to give you forgiveness of sins if you are not trusting in the blood. You can memorize the whole Bible. Entire Bible from Genesis chapter 1 to the last verse of Revelation and be able to recite it in, in less than three days, that's still not going to give you forgiveness of sins. You can repeat the sinner's prayers twice a day, in the morning and in the night, for the rest of your life. If you are not trusting in the blood, you are not forgiven. You are still an unforgiven sinner. 
That means you are not saved. You could be helping the needy, feed the poor, and do all kinds of good works to help people for the rest of your life. If you are not trusting in the blood, your sins are not forgiven. You can even build a house for your church and build a house for your pastors and your pastor's children and, and, and all those good things that people love to do. Not that there's anything wrong in those things. It's just not something that you can use to replace the blood of Jesus Christ that you are supposed to trust in. None of those things will give you the forgiveness of sins if you bypass the cross of Jesus Christ. You could perform miracles and be a, a, a popular miracle worker as like so many people uh, claim today that they can do miracles. You could be one of them. That doesn't give you forgiveness of sins. As a matter of fact, you can be a recipient of a lot of miracles. You know, there are people that claim that they can do miracles and there are others that they claim that they have received miracles. You can have testimonies of, of, of good things, testimonies of money, promotion, healing from diseases and money just appearing in your wallet. If that's your testimony and you have all those, th those, those miracles, if you haven't received Christ, you haven't trusted in the blood, you haven't received forgiveness of sins. You could be a pastor. You could even be a general of Russia with several claims of anointing. That's not going to give you forgiveness of sins. That's not going to replace the work of Jesus that was done for us. So until the blood is shed, your sins will remain unforgiven. Because the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission. You know, the Old Testament uh, uh, disciples, the Old Testament believers, they couldn't abandon the killing and the shedding of the blood of those animals for forgiveness of sins and say, you know, I'm just going to pray to God. I'm going to look to, to, to heaven and pray to God to forgive my sin. I'm not going to bother myself with any of those animal sacrifices that they do. You know, if anybody makes that decision in the Old Testament, the person will remain unforgiven. Because that's not going to work. You have to, you have to shed the blood. You have to do those sacrifices for you to receive forgiveness of sins. But today, I have to make this very clear. Today, uh, we have another option. There is a better option available. We don't have to kill animals anymore. We don't have to sacrifice animals because the Bible says those things could not take away sins. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 11. It says those sacrifices could not take away sins. As a matter of fact, they, they, they just stored up those sins waiting for Christ to shed his blood and take away everything. Because the blood of Jesus Christ also covered the sins that were committed under the Old Testament. That were remitted by the sacrifices of those animals. So the blood of Jesus Christ was the one that took it away. So... We have a better option now. So we are left with that one sacrifice of Jesus, which, by the way, is acceptable by God. So Christ on the cross of Calvary shedding his blood is a solution to the problem of our sins. If you miss that one, your sins will remain unforgiven. I cannot overemphasize that. All the religions in this world will give you their ways or their solutions or their means uh, to get out of the problem of sin. And it's mostly in the form of doing something or uh, doing this uh, self-control, uh, self-discipline, loving others. Don't do this. Don't do that. And don't do the other. And you can keep all those things. You can do all those things. Some of them are good things to do. You know, they, they are not bad things to do, but they are not intended to take away our sins. They are not intended to be the solution to the problem of our sins. There is already a solution that is provided for us. The Bible is very, very clear about that, that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. No good work can take you to God if you bypass the cross of Jesus Christ. It is impossible for anybody, regardless of his or her resume, to get to God without going through Jesus Christ. It's not possible for you. And the place to start is at the cross. So this is the question that I need to ask you. Have you been to the cross? Have you trusted in the blood of Jesus Christ? Have you believed? Have your sins been forgiven and the penalties taken care of? Or are you still trying to fix things and, and take care of things on your own? Because if you are trying to do it on your own, regardless of how good you are, you're not going to get far. You're not going to get anywhere. 
you have to run to Jesus. So now this is a point that some people would love to ask me, what about the devotees of other religions? What about those people who are not Christians, but they are very good people? You know, they, 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 they are very loving. They, they like to help other people. They care about the needy. They feed the poor. They give away their things to help others. They're very selfless. They don't tell lies. They don't cheat. They're very straightforward, but they're not Christians. So are you saying they can't get to God? Without Jesus? That's exactly what I'm saying. All the religions or religious groups in this world, with the exception of Christianity, they, 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 have, they have the things, the, the means that they have provided or they have uh, given their people as the way to get to God. But these means are all in the form of doing something or continuing to do something in order to, to merit access to God. But Christ has made it very, very clear that he is the only way to God. Outside of Jesus Christ, there's no good thing you can do. You can be the most well-behaved person in the world. If you don't come to Christ, you cannot get to God. Maybe now you are saying, why, why will I leave my religion and go to Christianity? Why will I leave my religion and follow Jesus and follow Christ? I love my religions. Everybody's nice to everybody. Everybody love each other. I feel happy with my life. I don't think I need Jesus. Well, I got news for you. Jesus Christ is the only one who died and rose again from the dead. You see, all the other gods, that's God with little g, and all the other religious figures that are popular in our world today, they all died and they all remain dead. Only Jesus Christ is alive. Don't ever forget that. But not only is Jesus Christ alive, he has also redeemed us by his own blood. And he has given the gift of eternal life to those who believe. <laughs> so he's alive and he has done something that will take us to God. He gave his own life. He died for us and he rose from the dead and is alive forever. So the question now comes to which one will you follow? Who will you follow? Which way will you go? Are you going to follow a dead God? A dead God that is constantly demanding sacrifice from you? Or are you going to follow a living God? A God who has sacrificed himself rather than demanding sacrifices from you. He has sacrificed himself. He has died for you. And he rose again from the dead to give you the gift of eternal life. Which God would you follow? A living God or a dead God? I think to people who are in their right mind, the choice is very clear. I want to follow a living God who is alive forever and he gave himself for me. That is the right choice to make. But the choice is still yours. I cannot decide for you because the Bible says, whosoever believeth. So you have to believe and God gives the people the choice whether to believe or to reject Jesus Christ. But I have to tell you this. If you miss the cross, you miss everything. Don't allow religion or false churches or false religions or, or, or their false doctrines to mislead you. You need to come to the cross and you can come today. You can believe right now. You don't need a pastor to lay hands on you or pray for you. You don't need to repeat any prayer. Uh, there's no such prayer that's written in the Bible that a sinner has to repeat before they can be saved. You don't even have to be in the church. You just have to hear the message of the gospel and believe and you will be saved. Believe with all your heart. All it takes to have forgiveness of sin is to trust in the blood of Jesus Christ. To believe that everything that he did on the cross, he did it on your behalf. Because that is why he did what he did. That is why he shed his blood. First Peter chapter 3 verse 18 says, For Christ also hath once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit. So you believe with all your heart that Jesus died for your sins. Which, by the way, you have to first believe you are a sinner. Some people, they are yet to believe they are sinners, which means they have not repented of their sins. Those that have repented of their sins, they know that they are sinners and, and that they are lost. 
without Christ. And when you believe that Jesus died for your sins and he shed his blood, his blood for you to pay the penalty of your sins, you believe that with all your hearts, the Bible says your sins will be forgiven immediately and you will receive the gift of of eternal life and you will you have a place with Christ in the afterlife that is what it means to be saved god does not require that a sinner would do something before or after he believes there is nothing you are required to do before you believe and there is nothing you are required to do after you believe in order for you to receive the forgiveness of sins all that you need to do is to put your trust in Christ you see, the desire to do good works will come after you've been regenerated, after you've been saved, after you've received salvation. The Holy Spirit comes in you to start working in you and he starts working through you. It is now Christ that is living in you. That's when you begin to see changes taking place in your life. But until then, everything you do is filthiness to God. You have to come to Christ first. Before you start trying to do good works. Remember, Jesus Christ did not wait for us to be good before he came to die for us. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, in verse 6, it says, For when we were yet without strength, in due time, Christ died for the ungodly. When we don't even know what we are doing, Christ has already died for the ungodly. Verse 7 says, For scarcely for a righteous man we won't die. Yet, for adventure for a good man, some will even dare to die. What that means is there are a lot of people who will not be ready to die for a righteous man. You understand? He said, maybe if you are very good, some may even dare to die for you, but what about a bad person? <laughs> Nobody wants to die for a bad person. But the next verse says, but God commended his love toward us. What that means is God demonstrated his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus Christ died for you when you were still a sinner. It did not require that you do anything before he paid for your sins. And you can believe today and put your faith, put your trust in the blood that he shed for you and you will be saved. You will receive forgiveness of sins and a place with Christ in eternity. That's what it means to be saved. But it begins by you going to the cross and trusting in the blood for the forgiveness of your sins. So like I said earlier, there's an article uh, that I wrote for this topic. If you love to learn more, you can go to Grace Studies website. If any part of this video has been a blessing to you in any way, I encourage you to share with others. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and regularly visit Grace Studies website. There are a lot of life-changing truth that will be a blessing to you. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, grace and peace be with you in Jesus' name. Amen.